Hello and welcome. I'm Daniel Chef for Arirang News. Let's start with the headlines. The fatality rate for Middle East Respiratory Syndrome or MERS in Korea is hovering at above 5 percent. The government is scrambling to contain the outbreak that began in late May and provide the public with more information. According to the Bank of Korea, the nation's purchasing power is at a five-year high, but the average jewel in Korea's case, the average Kim, isn't feeling it as the trend doesn't reflect the current state of the economy. For the first time, a senior American official has asked Seoul to get involved in opposing Beijing's land reclamation project in the South China Sea. U.S. Assistant Secretary of State Daniel Russell made the remarks against China's territorial claim at a seminar in Washington. Let's start with the Middle East Respiratory Syndrome or MERS outbreak here in Korea. For the latest, we turn to our Park ji -won, standing by at the news center. Five more cases have been confirmed in Korea, bringing the total to 35. Uh, can you give us the latest on that, ji -won? Well, Daniel, the health ministry says two of the new patients are medical personnel who treated confirmed MERS patients. And the other three visited family members and patients who shared hospital wards with MERS patients. And two of the new patients had no direct contact with the first patient, which means they're tertiary infections. And also a Korean Air Force officer stationed at the Osan Air Base has been isolated after an initial test showed that he had the virus. The health ministry's Center for Disease Control will perform additional tests to make a final MERS confirmation. The officer had been previously hospitalized at a civilian facility in Gyeonggi-do province that treated MERS patients. If the second test comes back positive, the officer would be the first MERS case in the Korean military. Some 90 soldiers who, had, who may have been in contact with the suspected patient are quarantined in their homes to prevent further infection. Well, Jiwon, the number of people in quarantine is increasing by the day. Where are we at now? Yes, Daniel. Well, health authorities have so far placed over 1,600 people in quarantine, about 1,500 in their homes, and the rest in state-run medical facilities. In another preventive measure, over 800 schools and preschools have decided to temporarily close for the remainder of this week, with the majority of them in Gyeonggi-do province, where the first MERS case was reported. Well, obviously, parents and educators are taking necessary precautions. Joan, can you tell us more about how dangerous this virus is? Well, Daniel, the fatality rate for previously documented cases of the MERS virus is roughly 35 percent. But here in Korea, we are at two deaths, a fatality rate just above 5 percent, but it's still early to say. Health officials say your reaction to the virus depends largely on the strength of your immune system. MERS may be more dangerous for those already suffering from respiratory issues or kidney failure or anyone using steroids, which are known to weaken the immune system. The first the first patient who died due to the virus was being treated with steroids due to arthritis. The second MERS death was a 71-year-old who was suffering from chronic lung disease. People over the age of 50 seem to be more vulnerable. Okay, we're learning a little bit more about the virus by the day. We, do we know about, what do you know about how the virus spreads so far, Joan, and uh, what is the government doing to contain it? Well, Daniel, researchers still don't know a lot about this virus, but according to the health ministry, the virus can be transmitted through a saliva. So if an infected patient coughs within two meters of you, transmission is possible. That said, the government is really stressing that all the confirmed patients picked up the virus at hospitals where they stayed pretty close to previous MERS patients for extended periods. And as for now, there are no known cases of people contracting MERS outside of of hospitals. But in terms of preventing infection, officials say the more you wash your hands, the better, and wearing a mask could help. And if you have symptoms, visit a hospital or call the government's MERS hotline. The government also launched a dedicated task force on Wednesday. We'll have authorities and local experts will serve as a control tower to deal with the outbreak. But there's definitely a public backlash as many people feel the government didn't really quickly um, the job it's done enough and missed the window to contain the first MERS patient. Well, thank you for that, Joanna. Do keep us updated on the latest developments. Moving on to other stories, medical officials aren't the only ones focusing all their efforts on containing the virus here in Korea. At the National Assembly, lawmakers met with medical experts to formulate ways to resolve the MERS crisis and also to prevent future outbreaks. Our Jim Young-gil has the details. 
The ruling's Hanori Party said it will push for a hospital dedicated to dealing with infectious diseases and allocate funds to counter the MERS outbreak. Countries like Hong Kong and Singapore have special quarantine hospitals. We'll allocate special budgets this year to improve the country's ability to handle contagious disease, including the construction of a dedicated quarantine hospital. The main opposition New Politics Alliance for Democracy also called on the government to consider leveling up the country's epidemic alert and promised to work with the Sanuri Party to ensure funding for all containment efforts. If the presidential house of Cheongwade demands supplementary budgets from the National Assembly to resolve the MERS crisis, we're more than willing to fully cooperate. Medical experts said the government needs to increase support for the country's hospitals, especially in one area. Medium and small-sized hospitals need full support with medical supplies within two to three days. Even the bigger university hospitals are running out of supplies for both patients and medical staff. Both parties promised to help the government quell growing public anxiety and rebuild trust. The Parliamentary Health Committee and Special MERS Committees will work closely with the Health Ministry to share more information about MERS with the public. Tim young Arirang News. In some economy news now, Korea's gross national income grew at its fastest pace in almost six years in the first quarter of this year. But the dramatic rise in the key indicator of the population's purchasing power is not translating to greater consumption, our Shin Zemin explains further. The Bank of Korea says the nation's gross national income in the first three months of this year rose 4.2 percent on quarter, reaching over 339 billion U.S. dollars. That's the fastest growth recorded since the second quarter of 2009 when it spiked 5 percent. The central bank largely attributes the increase to cheaper oil prices that have pushed down import prices more than export prices. The lower prices, in turn, have given Korean consumers more leeway to spend. But the stronger purchasing power hasn't boosted domestic demand, with private consumption edging up a mere 0.6 percent in the first quarter this year from a quarter earlier. Facilities investment ended up rising just 0.2 percent. We saw an increase in savings, but not in domestic investment. That indicates that consumer sentiment is shaky, leading to lower spending. The central bank says the economy also grew in the first quarter of this year, but just by 0.8 percent, a pickup from the previous quarter. But it's still below 1 percent, leaving experts questioning whether the economy is on a steady path to recovery. Shin Se-min, Arirang News. Meanwhile, Korea's manufacturing economy is sliding at its fastest pace in almost two years. Global financial information service provider Market Economics reported on Thursday that Korea's manufacturing purchasing managers index dropped to 47.8 in May, the lowest since August 2013. The index is based on monthly surveys of purchasing managers at private sector companies and a reading below 50 indicates a contraction. Market explained that Korea's manufacturing output has been declining because of fewer new orders coming in from countries like China. The report also showed that Korea's PMI in May was even lower than that of Greece, which is at a risk of defaulting in its debt. Korea had the fourth lowest PMI out of 24 countries, followed by Brazil, Indonesia and Russia. An OECD annual report showed that in comparison to other member nations, Koreans feel less satisfied with their lives. While they set great importance on social relations, a relatively large number of people said they don't know who to rely on in times of need. For more, here's our Son Jung-in. The Better Life Index, published every year by the OECD, rates the 34 member nations, as well as Brazil and Russia, on 11 variables that contribute to a high quality of life, including income, health and life satisfaction. This year, Korea ranked 27th, down two notches from last year. Australia remained at the top, followed by Sweden, Norway, Switzerland and Denmark. Korea scored badly in five indicators, including social connections, subjective well-being, health status, and work-life balance, 
with all ranking in the lowest 20 percent. When asked if they had someone they could rely on in a time of need, only 72 percent of Koreans said yes. That was the lowest figure in the OECD, which had an average score of 88 percent. In the work-life balance category, Korea ranked one from bottom in the OECD at 33rd, with nearly a fifth of adults working 50 hours or more a week on average. When it came to life satisfaction, which measures how people evaluate their life on a scale from 0 to 10, Koreans had a score of 5.8, lower than the OECD average of 6.6. However, despite its low satisfaction ranking, the report showed Korea remained above average in civic engagement, personal security, jobs and education. The report says these factors play a key role in providing individuals with skills to participate effectively in society and in the economy. Son Jung-in, Arirang News. President Park Geun-hye held summit talks with Macky Sall, the president of Senegal, at her office today. According to the presidential office, the meeting was the result of Seoul's efforts to expand its global diplomacy to focus on co-prosperity with the African continent. We turn to our Choi Yoo-sun for more on this story. Senegalese President Macky Sall first presented a mid to long term development plan for his country in 2013, consisting of 26 projects in infrastructure, energy, education, agriculture, and tourism. While Senegal will formally see Korean investment in that plan, estimated at 10 billion U.S. dollars, at a business leader's luncheon on Friday, the governments of Seoul and Dakar agreed to work together to secure Korean participation. President Bak said Korea has chosen Senegal as one of the countries with which it will strengthen development cooperation next year, and she hopes it will allow the two sides to enhance their bilateral cooperation. President Saul highlighted the growing friendship and trust between their countries since forging diplomatic relations in 1962. Injecting nearly $500 million of its Economic Development Cooperation Fund, Korea is close to completing construction of two ships that will travel between Senegal's southern and northern regions. It plans to commit some 900 million more this year to further develop Senegal's maritime infrastructure. Through such projects, President Buck's office says Korea is laying down a foundation for further cooperation with a country that holds great potential in maritime affairs and fisheries in West Africa. The two sides also agreed to work together on building a free economic zone in Senegal and developing the African nation's agricultural sector. Choi Yusun, Arirang News. The United States has called on Korea to play a bigger role in opposing Beijing's territorial claims in the South China Sea. The issue could pose a fresh dilemma for Seoul as it finds itself stuck between its two closest partners. Our Hwang Sung-hee has this report. Speaking at a seminar in Washington on Wednesday, U.S. Assistant Secretary of State Daniel Russell slammed China's land reclamation projects in the South China Sea. Pointing out that Korea is not directly involved in the dispute, Russell said Seoul has all the more reason to speak out because it's speaking not in self-interest but in support of universal principles. He added Korea must assume the role of a major stakeholder in the international order. This is the first time a senior American official has asked Seoul to get involved, and it comes as Washington steps up pressure against Beijing on this issue. Last week, U.S. Defense Secretary Ashton Carter urged Beijing to immediately halt its island-building activities in the South China Sea. U.S. officials say China's reclamation efforts have sped up, creating artificial islands that have expanded by 1,500 acres since last year. On Thursday, Seoul's foreign ministry expressed hopes for a peaceful resolution to the dispute, but maintained its distance on the matter. Our government hopes for peace and stability in the South China Sea by a complete and effective implementation of the Declaration on the Conduct of Parties in the South China Sea and a swift changing of a code of conduct between China and the ASEAN countries. Some say President Park Geun-hye's trip to Washington later this month could be an opportunity for U.S. President Barack Obama to bring up the issue again. If so, the territorial disputes may put Korea in a very difficult position between its two superpower partners.
Hwang sang Arirang News. We now shift our focus to inter-Korean relations. The South Korean government on Wednesday expressed deep regret over North Korea's false claims that Seoul is responsible for the breakdown in inter-Korean talks. In a statement released by Pyongyang on Wednesday, the communist regime blamed the South for spoiling inter-Korean ties and pressuring the North to hold dialogue. Seoul called on Pyongyang to hold talks without any preconditions to improve peace and stability on the Korean peninsula. In recent weeks, North Korea has ramped up provocations, claiming a successful ballistic missile launch from a submarine, as well as the ability to miniaturize nuclear warheads. Despite the increased tensions, South Korea says it will encourage civilians to further cooperate with Pyongyang if it helps promote reconciliation and the restoration of national unity. That's all from us for now. Thank you for watching. Do join us at 10 p.m. Korea time for primetime news.